we've got a lot of unfinished business here in the Big 12 that we want to make sure we take care of. Calling, doing this is my calling. Flow is so appalling. Let's go. Win on three. One, two, three. Win. Shotgun snap. Under pressure. Big sack. Ooh, be a go It's picked off by Josh Thompson. Touchdown, Texas. One man to beat. And he will shake it. Forget about it. Bijan Robinson. 62 yards for a touchdown. Played the game and I'm still the same and I never change just to get a dip. Balling, balling. I came from nothing. It's nothing like it's nothing. Yeah, you know I done it. That is no discussion. We just look at it as this year being an opportunity to prove everybody right and also prove the doubt is wrong. See you good night to this one, Roshan Johnson! Football is a bit of a puzzle, and I believe that we have the perfect person putting players, coaches, plays, calling it all in the right places so that the puzzle can fit perfectly. Welcome back in to another victorious edition of Rewind with Coach Sark. I'm Bo Galindo. He's the head coach of Texas football. Coach, something that really stood out to me leading up to this game against TCU is that you openly addressed head-on the struggles in the past that this program has had against TCU. Whereas a lot of coaches, especially first year, may say, hey, that's not me, that's not my problem, that's the past, this is different. Why did you decide to embrace those struggles head-on? Well, I think... You know, our players are going to hear it regardless. So I'd rather them hear that messaging for me, uh, what our approach is going to be going into the ball game. Um, I think sometimes we can, as coaches, try to play naive to things uh, when in reality the players know and the players know we know. So sometimes for me, is like a lot of the issues that we have, I like to be upfront, transparent, open, honest. Um, and that in turn, I think gains continues to gain that trust, right? That at least coach is being real with us yeah. about the situation that we're in. So this program trying to get the first win in Fort Worth since 2013. A lot of great players in this matchup. There's one for TCU. Max Duggan on the other side, 2-0 against the Longhorns. Opening kick doesn't go according to plan. No, it really didn't. It's unfortunate. They used a little different return. We've got a free hitter. Uh, we'd love to have him down there at the 10-yard line. We're not able to make the tackle, but just amazing effort here by uh, Keelan Robinson of getting them down and giving us a chance defensively. So Keelan Robinson gets down there. They're in great field position, obviously. And this is Zach Evans. He's really good. Forces a missed tackle here for the touchdown. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, this is second down. Uh, three of our better players, Anthony Cook, Luke Brockemeyer, Jacoby Jones, all our inability to get them on the ground would have loved to force a third down right there, and we weren't able to do it. But here's a great response. Yeah, we, our, after that opening kickoff, I thought our special teams had a fantastic game. Uh, probably our, their best game of the year. Uh, Deshaun Jameson had a couple really big returns in the kickoff return game to give us good field position. And here's the early shot, trying to make that statement. Yeah, we, we felt like we had a, we had a good matchup, um, you know, just off the fingertips of Josh Moore. Uh, but, but the beauty of that is we're not going to stop throwing the ball down the field. We need to continue to get there. And then opening drive, once again, heavy dose of Bijan Robinson. Yeah, good start running the football. Um, you know, I think that was kind of, you could kind of see where the game was going to go of us going to run downhill at these guys. You guys really like that quarterback sneak. Well, you know, sometimes it's a lot easier to get one yard when you just go forward than hand the ball back to a guy who's seven yards deep. Keep it simple. No worries, no issues with that. Once again, Robinson spinning off tackles. Again, you know, he's got an uncanny ability to, uh, to make people miss in the hole uh, and, and avoid contact and then get vertical. Again, mm. just right here, you know, these runs don't look like a lot, but, you know, it's, it's still a gain of eight yards and, and a positive play. It's like a great mogul skier, right? Like the yeah. feet are moving left and right. The torso is still always pointed straight downhill. This was an unfortunate situation. We had a third and one. We get a false start. We go to third and six. We have a miscommunication and pass protection. We end up giving a sack. So we go from a situation that we excel in in the red area and put us in a difficult situation. Uh, and then fortunate there with Dicker just sneaking in and off the upright. And Dicker played a large role in this win. You get points there on the opening drive. Obviously not what you wanted with your history this season of cashing in in the red zone. Then your defense comes back. Nice open tackle by Overshone. Yeah, Overshone's been great in the open field all year of just getting people on the ground. Uh, I thought our guys did a really good job on all these perimeter plays of, of getting a very athletic team on the ground, forcing the third down, um, and then ultimately getting off the field. Third and five, Duggan off the mark there, forces a punt, and they down this one at the two-yard line. So that sets up a long, long drive. Yeah, 
you know, it was a little bit of a mishit by their punter. Uh, they're able to get the ball down there, uh, you know, backed up situation. Um, you know, we were able to kind of create a little bit of air on first down. Uh, we get the second down, we get the third down here. Uh, and, you know, you never, you never love the targeting penalties, but when they show up and, you, you know, they, it is what it is in the game of football right now. We've, we've got to be diligent in what we're teaching and how we approach it all. How did this unfold from your perspective with the timeout and then the review? Yeah, it was interesting. I, I didn't, I didn't know how and or why that happened. Um, but then, when you slow it down, the intent of the rule, leading with the crown of the helmet, you know, targeting, you know, the above the shoulders, uh, was really what it was. Nice move here by Casey Thompson, and he's off. Yeah, it was. You know, this is one thing Casey's got. You know, he's obviously a very good athletic kid, you know, as a player, but but he's a competitive guy, and he just kind of finds a way to find a way to move the ball down the field. Uh, really, really cool completion right here to Josh Moore. Uh, you know, I struggled with this one because I really thought it, was, I thought it was a first down. So we kind of got caught in a little bit of a bind. Um, went to a different way to run the quarterback sneak, uh, this time with Roshan Johnson to get the first. Creative, though. Different look. Yeah, former quarterback. Former quarterback. Knows what to do with the rock. So you move the chains, and then it's Bijan, 27 yards. Unreal. Yep, again, just, the, you know, in the hole, the one-cut ability, and then back to full speed. Last week we saw it on the kind of wheel route out of the backfield. He makes yeah. the guy miss back to full speed here. He breaks the one tackle back to full speed again and then splits it down the middle. It's like one step to full speed for number five. And then the defense coming up, opportunistic. Here's a miscue, and you pounce on it with Deshaun. Yeah, you know, it looks like they just dropped the ball, but quite frankly, we had a corner blitz on. Mm. And if you look at the returner who's getting the reverse, his eyes come up because he sees Jamison coming on the blitz and then drops the ball and then he recovers it. So trying to make something out of that turnover. Here's Bijan, nothing much, but picks up three. Yep, just kind of the way the game was gonna go. It was gonna be a grinded out. It's a good defensive team. Unfortunate here, we get in a third down situation and we just don't execute what we had a, we thought was a really good call on. Didn't quite get the execution done. And, this was going to be the story of the game. You know, we, we weren't very efficient in the red area, but the idea that man, we had a kicker go four for four, uh, that, that's big, you know, down the road, and those points mattered. Duggan taking a shot, finds Tay Barber. Yep. Or, excuse me, Quentin Johnson on this play. Yep. Um, they got in behind Anthony Cook, you know, really a couple different times there on the same route, so something, like we said, that we've got to work on moving forward. A huge clean hit by B.J. Foster. It was a nice hit. It was a heck of a job by, by their kid making the catch. Uh, those are tough catches to make. It, it was a good hit by him. And then TCU finding themselves in the end zone. That's Spielman. Yep. Uh, coming back out the back door, you know, they kind of a, a bunch look coming out the back door. We thought we had the quarterback pinned, but he was able to slide out and get the completion. So you don't punt often. Haven't had to use Dicker in the last few weeks. He comes out for the first time in forever. This is a beautiful punt. It's muffed and overshone recovers. Great punt, great coverage by Keelan Robinson, and then having you know the speed of overshone on the field to make the play. And then you got Xavier Worthy with the drop. Yeah, it, it wasn't X's best game. He'd be the first one to tell you. Uh, coming after a, a great game last week, had a couple drops that uh, wasn't able to pull it in, but I expect him to bounce back this week. That's kind of the story of this game and, and shows the toughness of this team where there were guys that weren't at their best but found the way. Yeah, yeah and I think that's that's the key, right? you got to be able to play complementary football. Uh, when, when you've got a hot hand, whether it's a player or a scheme, you try to lean on it um, because you know, you'd know love to be perfect, but everybody's going to be off a little bit. And here's a nice toss from Duggan for 18 yards. You feel like he never really hit the deep backbreaker type of shot, though? Well, that was the key. We knew these guys loved to take their shots down the field. We knew we were susceptible to it coming out of the Tech game. We wanted to make sure we kept the ball in front of us and make them earn it down the field. Uh, and that's really what we did. There's another third down stop for us in the red area, forcing the field goal. And with those three points, TCU takes the lead back. So this is just a good old Big 12 slugfest. Teams going back and forth. Nice little hop. And Bijan doing the rest. Nice stiff arm as well. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, just, again, that wasn't really designed to go out the back door the way it did. That's just a guy who's a good runner having a feel and, and finding, a, finding his niche. And once again, 
making plays happen. I, I've run out of ways to describe you, Sean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think what we saw in this game here was a guy that hadn't really ever been exposed to this many carries. It was mm -hmm. something that we had talked to him about coming out of spring, that the mental and physical toughness needed to be a guy that could carry the load this way. And I think he's really matured in that aspect of it, of embracing that role, and then seeing the physicality of, of getting in the end zone there. Here's another one that uh, is going to end up being a penalty on the on the third and nine for the late hit. There was a couple of these head scratchers where you just wonder what is the defensive player supposed to do in that situation? Yeah, th there's, there's some tough calls. There was a couple bang bang plays in the game. Uh, I thought our guys played hard. I didn't think we played in a nature that was, you know, trying to be dirty at all. I thought we played hard. We were able to get some stops. Um, again, another really critical third and two stop about the defensive line. Uh, continues to, to improve and play better week in and week out. Shows up here with a true freshman, Byron Murphy. Now, Thompson, this is an interception, but on this play, it's clearly a hold. You just see it right there as Xavier Worthy was trying to get deep and get loose. Yeah, you know, I like to say, hey, football's football, and flags are going to happen. And when they're thrown, very rarely do they pick them back up. So <laughs> you've, you've got to kind of accept the situation that you're in and get yourself back to work. Thompson looking for Worthy. This one off his fingertips. Sets up a third and seven, and Thompson is sacked on this play. Yeah, this is unfortunate. Um, you know, I would have really loved for Casey to move up in the pocket here. I thought they did a nice job in coverage. Hey, that happens sometimes, but Casey's had so much success stepping up in the pocket and using his legs to get first downs. We just want to continue to reinforce that. And here's Anthony Cook. Yeah, big sack fumble, scoop, score. We'd love to kind of continue that. Uh, but a great job. It's one thing to sack the quarterback. It's another to knock the ball loose and then recover it and, uh, and get us good field position. This is a great teachable moment for us here, though. You know, this is where we get that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Uh, that is unacceptable in our program, and, and that'll be fixed moving forward. And that's one of the runs I've talked to you about before, how Bijan is parallel to the ground and still gets three or four. It's incredible. Yeah. You know, he just, he's just a workhorse, man. He's got, he's got the complete package of... Um, you know, the speed, but yet the power, the elusiveness. Uh, and this, you know, we're, we're finally hit the deep ball down the field to create an explosive play. Um, if we're going to run the football the way we are, these plays have to come to life for us and, and create these opportunities down the field. That's grown man strength right there from Whittington. Heck of a catch by Jay Witt. You know, he, he had a nice football game. And then in the red zone on a third and three, Thompson trying to get the edge. Not quite. Yeah, you know, we, we didn't block great on the perimeter there. Uh, was something that uh, we knew they were good athletic tackling secondary, weren't able to get it done. And again, force another field goal, which, you know, we felt like was big, making it a two-score game right there. And I know on plays like this, there's only so much you can say, so I have no issue being the guy that says, I, I don't know what Cook can do in this situation and I know you pled your case to the officials after that one but it is considered a late hit and then here's Zach Evans spinning out this is one of his better runs of the day it was a big run you know I mean he's a he's a dynamic player we knew it coming in how well we could contain him was going to be critical um, that that won't run and then the touchdown run that he had early uh, was were two of the best runs he had all day uh, but I thought for the most part we hung in there and kept him contained. Yeah, and stops like this after the big play, holding them to a field goal here in the red zone, that's a huge factor in getting this win. It really was, and it was all about effort. That's what we keep preaching, uh, Jet Bush coming back around the edge and, and getting him on the ground. All right, for a BYU guy, this may be a little sacrilegious, but we came up with the, the new nickname, Baby Steve Young, for Casey Thompson. I know he's not left-handed, but <laughs> the way he just finds ways to make plays, it's, right. it's young ass. Well, that's what I was talking about, him attacking the line of scrimmage when things aren't there, of moving forward in the pocket. He has the athleticism. He's obviously a mentally tough, competitive kid to get that done. And picking up those extra yardage there on third and three is so big. Thompson now feeling the pressure. And he gets it to Robinson. Yep, again, just an outlet, check down outlet. Again, as many times we can get him the ball in space to make that happen. And then another quarterback sneak. And, you know, we really try to teach sneaks in a way. And if you see it, Bijan kind of helping uh, Casey get the first down. And then Robinson, Keelan showing the burst. Yep, we just, you know, we, again, we keep talking about the, how many backs we have. Obviously, we leaned on number five, but we wanted to make sure we were getting the ball and 
uh, Roshan's hands and Keelan's hands in this game. And here's another shot. Thompson stepping up. Almost has it. You brought, you brought it up in your press conference. They're so close. Yeah, and we're going to keep going. You know, I used the analogy earlier. You know, Jerry West once said he was a 50% you know, shooter, field goal percentage. And if he misses his first 10, look out. So we're going to keep taking our shots and, and we'll hit these things. To me, that was one of the huge plays of the game, that third down conversion there by Robinson. It really was. Yeah, big time run and then to come right back uh, with the RPO here, uh, first and 10 from the 32 and Jay Witt, this is what he does. You know, he's a, he's a reliable guy, but he is tough to get on the ground once he makes his catch. So you got yourself a 12 point lead at this point, did not get that two point conversion. So now it's up like defense, make some plays and they almost do here. Yeah, I mean, somebody's got to decide who wants it and let the other guy catch it between Demo and, and uh, Brockmeyer. I think they both had their hands on the ball at one point. Second and 10. Trying to run it up the middle to Vondre Sweat. Yep. He's there. Sweat and Ojimo. Sweat had a really good football game. Probably his best game since we've been here. Very active. Um, and for a big man, when he's active, he's tough. And that's broken up by Sweat. So back to the offense. We're in the fourth quarter, and Bijan keeps churning out yards. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was a good job by the offensive staff. We went to a little bit of a different wrinkle here uh, in the fourth quarter from a run game standpoint, scheme standpoint. It was very effective. Uh, not only on this drive, but even in that in the last drive of the ball game. Can you share that wrinkle? Uh, you know, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> if you know, you know. How about that? But Bijan keeps moving forward, gets another nice jump cut here, and working it to the outside. Yeah, a little winded yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. at this point in the game, you know. And that's uh, hey, that's that's the way it goes. We need a workhorse, and we we come right back with Roshan. Uh, another good physical run. We're down to the four. We really felt like we were leaning on them, uh, kind of imposing our will, if, if you'd like. We get the penalty, a false start, which hurt us, and then we come back to the to the fly sweep to Xavier Worthy. All right, so you're setting yourself up. You got third and short, and then ultimately fourth and one. Yeah, we, we go to third and short, you know, and we get, down, we get ourselves down to about the one or inside the one. And at this point of the game, uh, my mindset was if we score here, the game's over. Uh, we can take this thing to, to a 19 point game, finish the game. And if we don't score, they still have to go 99 yards to, to score once and they're still gonna need another touchdown to win it. So I felt confident in what we did. Uh, we had like to have trust in our players, which, which we did do that. It didn't work out the way we wanted. Um, and then they put together a heck of a drive and, and worked themselves down the field for a score. Yeah, because like you said, they had to go 99 yards. They ultimately do, but you made them work for it. This was a long drive for a game that was going to come down to one possession. Exactly right. Exactly right. And, um, you know, again, I would love to have gotten a little better pass rush at this point. You know, how many times have we seen number zero get that guy down right mm -hmm. there? Um, so those are the things when I talk about that mental intensity late in the game that we need to that we need to preserve and, and keep. And you know, you, you see it right here on this play where we just looked a little bit kind of out of gas of, of sorts. So they kick it with 424 left. They're essentially saying, we think we can stop you and get the ball back. Yep, and we knew we were gonna run it. They knew we were gonna run it. And it was just a matter of, you know, could we get that done? And I, I honestly thought this was probably our runs were blocked the best in this drive as opposed to any other drive in the game. I and mean, we really, it was a clean line of scrimmage. It allowed Bijan an opportunity to get vertical. I think if he could have that run back, he would bring it back out the back door like he did earlier. Um, but again, just a clean line of scrimmage and it allowed him to stay moving forward. Um, and then our ability to shoot, run the ball here on third down. Uh, this wow. is fantastic effort on one leg. And what I love there is Junior uh, and Christian Jones because he might be short, but if you see the effort of the offensive line right there kind of knocking him back forward uh, was probably one of the more critical plays of the game right there, that kind of push forward by Junior to get him the first. Well, I want to go back to your point that you made that this was the best your O-line may have been in this game. And it's the fourth quarter. It's all the same guys. And they're tired, so how did they do it? What did it show you? Well, I just see it here. Jake Majors, Jared Wiley, Christian Jones, Derek Kerstetter. I mean, all these guys getting around the football, knocking Bijan forward, and that's a mentality, you know, and that's where we take pride in the way we practice and the way we work, uh, and we're able to get that done right there and then ultimately, you know, take a couple knees and, and get out of there with a win. First time getting the dub in Fort Worth since 2013, and you did it against a really good TCU team with a lot of weapons. Bijan, 
Uh, we could just talk about this guy forever. He could have his own show. He is that good. 35 carries, 216 yards, and two touchdowns. And what's incredible is this is a Texas team now with more than 1,000 yards rushing in the past three games combined. During the broadcast, Dusty Dvorak with high praise on the turnaround and the Texas ground game, especially with the offensive line. Give this offensive line credit for the third straight week. They were dominated against Arkansas. Embarrassed. And Kyle Flood, the offensive line coach, challenged these guys. And so did Steve Sarkeesian. And they came back against Rice, and they ran it down their throat. And they came back against Texas Tech, and they ran it down their throat. And here, 273 yards on the ground. We're going to give Bijan a lot of credit, as well we should. But you also got to give a lot of credit to this Texas offensive line. Has shown huge improvement from where they were in week number two and setting up a big matchup in Dallas next weekend. All right, Coach, want to get your reaction to those lofty comments, the high praise there for the turnaround with the O-line. Well, I'm, I'm proud of this group. You know, I, I think they took, a, yeah, they, they took a lot of external shots. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of tough coaching coming out of that Arkansas game. Um, you know, I commend Coach Flood for his work with this group, but these guys are a, a veteran group. Um, I think they went right back to work. Uh, they, they put in the time, the effort, not only on the field, but in the classroom to really understand what we were doing, why we were doing it. Uh, and the result is, you know, we've ran the football really well for three straight weeks. Uh, and that's a credit to Bijan and Roshan and Keelan and those guys. Uh, but it's also a credit to that offensive line and, and our tight ends and their ability to, to block the, ver the varying looks that we get and do it with the mentality of not just being assignment sound, but sustaining that block and finishing that block. And you saw it numerous times in this game with Lyman downfield, knocking runners forward. Uh, that's the mentality we have to have up front as a football team uh, if we're going to play the style of play that we're playing. Would you agree that, A, it wasn't the prettiest performance, and B, it doesn't really matter? <laughs> well, you know, I, I said this after the game. You know, I, hey, I'd much rather, you know, win ugly than lose pretty. And uh, I don't know if that was the prettiest win. You know, that was a little bit ugly. Uh, there's a lot of plays we'd love to have back, uh, probably in all three phases. Uh, but in the end, uh, I think it shows a little bit of the grit and the perseverance that this team has that, that we found a way to win. Um, because we're going to be able to lean and, and use this game somewhere down the road to reference back, to get our team back when we get, when we get you know, hit in the face with adversity again. So a um, lot of teachable moments, a lot to learn from. Uh, but in the end, it was a, it was a much better you know, bus ride home when, when you win than, it, than if you don't. Something that Coach Barnes said to me on his show in this studio years ago has always stuck with me when he talked about the great players. It's their ability to find a way to win when they are not at their best. And Casey was not at his best. But what did you see in that regard, the ability to just simply get it done? Well, I, I think there were some critical plays in there. You know, obviously we, we missed some things and things didn't go the way we wanted to. But the deep post to, to Jay Witt was a heck of a play. A couple scrambles internally to get a first down. There's a critical third down scramble to his left. Um, and then ultimately the, you know, the throw to Jay Witt there on first and 10 from the 32. Um, those, are all, those are all the plays that you need to find a way to make mm -hmm. when, when, when you got to make them. And Casey's got that about him. I think he's got great energy. He's got a great um, energy about him that I think the players respond to. Um, a quarterback, sometimes you, you don't always throw six touchdowns every week. you, you got to find a way to make those plays in the critical moments, especially in the fourth quarter. Those are the defining plays in a game. Win, baby, win. Famous man once said that, and it holds true with a performance like this. Coming up, we've got the Big 12 highlights. See how OU did against Kansas State leading into the Red River Showdown. And we've got our breakdown. We talk offense and defense, and of course, there's going to be more from the guy wearing that number five on his chest and on his back. Welcome back to Rewind. Let's get into the Big 12 highlights, and we start with Iowa State trying to get right against Kansas, and they did. First quarter, here's Brock Purdy looking for Xavier Hutchinson. Hutchinson breaks free of the DB and is gone for 36 yards. Iowa State up 7 0. Next possession, though, for the Jayhawks is Jason Bean. All day to make this throw, but he's flushed and fumbles off himself. That's right. Off the right leg, Bean coughs it up. Iowa State recovers. Great field position for them, and this is what they do. Purdy looking for Charlie Kolar. 
Nice job of eluding the pressure, and he finds the big old tight end in the corner of the end zone, and it's 14 0 Iowa State. Kansas going for it near midfield. On fourth and one, they are stuffed, so Iowa State has a short field again, and they're going for the throat here. Next play, Purdy to Joe Skates. 44 yards, running free, and the Cyclones lead 21-0. It's now a 28-point game. Kansas in the red zone. Bean, he does not fumble off his leg, but he does throw an interception. So Iowa State obviously getting the football back. They don't have great field position here, but they work themselves into better field position with Kolar, 23 yards. And then capped with Brees Hall, who had a day. 17 carries, 123 yards. This one of his two touchdowns. And Iowa State wins with ease, 59-7. to Then we got Henry Columbi and Texas Tech going up against West Virginia. Red Raiders trying to bounce back from the loss against Texas. What a play by Colin Schooler. A little strip sack as Devin Drew recovers for the Red Raiders. So Texas Tech in great field position. Little flip to Miles Price. Price stuttering, 14 yards, getting the Red Raiders into the red zone. And Sir Roderick Thompson, short carry, but the toughness somehow staying upright, drawing the rest of the defense with him and bringing it into the end zone to put Texas Tech up 14-0. Jared Dagey, his response, what a catch by Sam James, looking like Jordan Weddington going up for that 40-yarder. Later in the drive, it's Letty Brown. Great balance to stay up there. West Virginia within 10. It's now 17 to 10. Deggy to Isaiah Esdell. Running free, 55 yards. But he can't elude the rest of the Tech defense. Still a huge play there for West Virginia. And it was set up this. Deggy back to Esdell. 14 yards, he holds on, and it's a three-point game. Tied up now with 20, under four minutes. Columbia gonna chuck it to Kalen Geiger. 42 yards, first down for Tech. Next play, Sir Roderick. It's Thompson with the patience. Good to see him back and healthy for Red Raiders football. Tech in field goal range. And with 22 seconds left, we are not tied anymore. Jonathan Garibay, 32 yards, game winner. And Red Raiders win by three. Good bounce back for them. Then you had the battle of the teams that were undefeated. Mike Gundy, Dave Aranda, it's Oklahoma State and Baylor. This is Jalen Warren, eight yards, physicality. Oklahoma State up seven, nothing. Second quarter, third and long for the boys. Spencer Sanders, however, is picked off by JT Woods. Three interceptions for Sanders in the game. He found a way to make up for it. Sanders, chucking it to Rashad Owens. Double coverage, don't matter. What a pass there by Sanders, and that puts Oklahoma State up 14-0 at the half. Third quarter, fourth down for Baylor. Going for it. Abraham Smith gets more than the two yards needed. He's got 55 yards and six points, and so Baylor is now within a touchdown. That play changed things very, very quickly. Fourth quarter, Baylor trailing 17-7. Good job of Jerry Bahannon of eluding the blitz. Tyquan Thornton on the other end, 44 yards. And then Bohannon keeping himself and Baylor within three. Third and long now for Oklahoma State, under three minutes left. Sanders scrambling, looking for the first down, but he is just short of the stick. So decision time for Mike Gundy. What's it gonna be? Well, it's gonna be the right call here. That's Warren, touchdown. 36 carries for him, 125 yards and two touchdowns. Oklahoma State stays unbeaten at 24 and 14. Definitely one of the surprises in the Big 12. Then you got Oklahoma trying to snap a two-game losing streak against Kansas State. This is Spencer Rattler, the scramble for the first down. Later in the drive, Rattler going to face some pressure, but show off the arm. He's got a great red zone target here in Austin Stogner. Barely holds on to the football, sets up a third and one, and this is Jeremiah Hall time. Little end around, and Hall ends up with a four-yard touchdown. So Oklahoma takes the lead, 10 to seven. Third quarter, Wildcats trying to come back, 27 to 10. They are down 
Good to see Skylar Thompson back and making throws like this. Keenan Garber, 54 yards. Kansas State trying to turn it into points. Deuce Vaughn, a little floater from Thompson, and the double deuce gets in, and it's 27-17, so the Wildcats on the comeback trail. Fourth quarter, Kennedy Brooks, 28 yards. First and goal for Oklahoma. And two plays later, a little creativity here. Underhand pitch forward to Hall, and Oklahoma makes it 34-17 game. But Thompson and the Wildcats sticking around. Six minutes left. Vaughn again out of the backfield. Wow, what a cut there for the little man. 33 yards, plays big. You ain't gonna hurt him doing that. Kansas State in business. Third and goal. Thompson, the BB to Landry Weber. Wildcats within 10. OU would kick a field goal. They're up 37-24. On the kickoff, Malik Knowles. Special teams stand out. Such patience, just waiting for something to open, and when it does, putting the gas down. 93 yards, Wildcats within six with 120 left. They need the onside. They don't get the onside. OU feeling good, moving to five and O after taking down the Wildcats 37-31. That sets the stage for Texas and OU. This is how you know it's a great rivalry game because both these teams have been at different points, right? In the recent runs, OU's been up, Texas has been down, but they find a way to make this game close. Since 2014, no other matchup has more one possession games than Texas and OU with seven. Behind that is Florida and LSU. Coming up on Rewind, you know what they say, look good, play good. The inside story on how Texas does exactly that with the help of a Texas X. All my suits, you know, royal blue, pink. I seen the Sean Jameson suit and I was like, whoa, like, if you see his car and his suit, they look the exact same. The offensive player of the game, take one guess. You got it right. It is B. John Robinson, who is also the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week. Goes over 200 yards to become the first Longhorn going 200 plus since Deontay Foreman and his Dope Walker season of 2016. Coach, let's start the breakdowns and begin with B. John Robinson, the guy that leads the Bull subdivision in yards from scrimmage. He's done everything for this team, and here he is, 27 yards for the touchdown. Yeah, a little bit of a uh, little bit of a zone read option here. Casey does a nice job of, of with the give, um, and at the end of the day, you know, we continue to find out, and he continues to prove us right. If you give this guy just enough space to make one guy miss in the hole, and then his ability to get back to top end speed is, is pretty incredible. And uh, it showed up again there on the touchdown run. And then final drive, ices it. Yeah, but we got a little bit of a counter play on. He, he looks to kind of uh, bounce it. The, the defender shows up and just that jump cut and then the leg drive to get vertical. And then like we, we, we talked about earlier, I just love the effort by the offensive line, by the two guys coming to knock him forward to get that first down. And you said earlier in your press conference, it, press conference that Okafor is out for the season, so our best wishes for him getting healthy as quickly as possible because he's been a huge part of this team. Uh, going forward now with Jordan Whittington, this is a guy really coming on at the right time. Past two games, 172 receiving yards. This one goes for 37. Yeah, it really was. You know, we had been running the football pretty well out of this formation. Uh, he got isolated one-on-one -on, -one on the safety. Really nice stick at the top of the route. And then what I love about this catch is the way he attacks the ball in the air. Uh, you know, he really went up. That was his football. Turns his entire body. It was all hands. Uh, really good catch by him in a critical moment. And then his touchdown. Yeah, the touchdown comes off of the RPO. He runs the slant. And then the beauty of, of Jordan is his ability to, to extend plays. Is he's hard to get on the ground. I, I don't know if it's a little bit of the running back background, but he's got a natural feel for whether it's breaking tackles physically or stepping away out of tackles, it showed up again there on the touchdown. All right, we'll focus now on Casey Thompson and Keelan Robinson. And with Casey, we're going to put in focus this scramble. Really nice play here. Picks up 41 yards. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a naked bootleg, if you'd like, um, with Xavier Worthy coming out the back door. They defend it well. Um, 
And Casey goes right back to the competitiveness and the athleticism of just, you know, working down the field. And, and then, of course, as coaches, what we want to talk about is the ball coming out at the end of the play. <laughs> as great of a run this was, you know, we go right to you got to keep that ball high and tight. You got to have your, your alerts and your awareness up. Number one comes back and pulls it out. And then Keelan on the sweep. Yeah, just trying to utilize guys' strengths. You know, Keelan is obviously a very fast player, tremendous on special teams again this weekend, uh, and just an opportunity to get him out on the edge. I think it's about a gain of 13 or 14 yards and, and uh, kind of continue to build momentum for us. And then he's the perfect guy to get us into special teams because this is a unit that is really fun to watch. They make plays, the plays that pop, sometimes the plays that go under the radar, but they're doing your thing. And you mentioned after that opening kick, the special teams played a complete game. So let's pick it up there. And this is Deshaun Jameson with the answer, his own kick return. Yeah, it was a great return. We got a really good double team at the start of this thing. Uh, nice, nice angles by everybody, good block by everybody uh, and as we keep telling DJ if we can get you one-on-one -on -one to the kicker you know that means we everybody's done their job and now now let's see what you can do from that point so uh, we got him to the kicker a couple different times then we go to the punt tremendous punt by Dicker I mean this guy's been fantastic I know no one's seen it we see it in practice but great punt and then great coverage by Keelan Robinson, uh, Tyler Owens, and then Overshone there to uh, to recover the muff. And Dicker just named the Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Week. That's fantastic, and he deserved it. He had a heck of a game. You know, he, he really did. This is what you love, though. You got stars busting their butt down on special teams like DeMarvion Overshone when most of the highlights are like this that we're going to see. Overshone making the plays at his linebacker spot. Yeah, he, you know, Demo's a bit of an eraser, right? You know, you look, it looks like plays are going to be there for a team. Uh, and a chance right there to scoot out and a really good tackle by him right there to get the runner on the ground. And then after this play, we see him make a really good reaction on Duggan, who really didn't get loose on the ground. Yeah, you know, it was a point of emphasis of ours. We knew, um, you know, he can hurt you with his legs. They've got a little bit of a screen on right there. He goes to scramble. Uh, and, and Demo shows back up and gets him on the ground. Then while we're talking about the linebackers, it seemed like Brockemeyer was dealing with some pain in the shoulder, but he kept busting his butt too. Yeah, he really has. I mean, you know, Brockemeyer is a, a grinder, man. He's a blue collar guy and uh, it, it showed up again. I think he, he wanted that interception. He wanted to go two weeks in a row and Demo tried to take it from him, <laughs> but uh, he's kind of Johnny on the spot. He's around the ball a lot and, uh, you know, he's made a lot of plays for us. You've pointed out how well Anthony Cook has played since week number one and finally got his moment where he has that big play that shows up in the highlights in the box score. Yeah, it was. It was a nice call by, by Coach PK, uh, bringing him off the slot, a little bit of a play-action pass, RPO. Uh, and the beauty of it is I think a lot of times for DBs, when they, when they come off the edge, they just want to get the sack. But this is a really good hit with his shoulder uh, into the back to knock the ball out and then the ability to get back up off the ground, scoop it with a chance to score. So it was almost a really, you know, it was really a complete play by him there. All right, this next one is Byron Murphy. And I promise I did not specifically put this in because I know I got a man crush on the guy and bring him up all the time. But yeah. uh, other people saw how good he looked on this move for the tackle for loss. Yeah, I mean, Byron keeps getting better. You know, he is really coming for us. Really good quick first step and then get vertical. Um, you know, he's a powerful guy. But you see the first step, uh, using the fundamentals and techniques, and then, and then getting the quarterback on the ground and a critical stop for us right there. What's the biggest takeaway from what you saw from your defense, knowing that two of the things that were really high on the priority list were taken away, the deep shots and Duggan scrambling? Well, that just means that we're, we're taking the meeting room, the emphasis, the, you know, the, what it's going to take in, for us in this game to win, and then applying it in-game. And, you know, we weren't perfect. I don't know if anyone's ever played a perfect football game. We weren't perfect, but when you can start to at least do the things that you're emphasizing, and generally as coaches, when you get what you emphasize, man, now you're getting yourself into a, into a winning formula state. And I think that that's, you know, really showed up here Saturday. Oh. Texas takes down TCU. They look good. We know this. Texas always looking good because the way they stroll into the stadium, thanks in large part to a Texas X. We'll have the story of Texas getting suited up coming up.
Now it's time for the Texas defensive player of the game coming off the win against TCU, and it is Anthony Cook. He was everywhere. Eight tackles, two of them for loss. And on that tackle for loss, he gets credit with the sack, forced fumble, and the fumble recovery. So Anthony Cook doing it all in the win against TCU. That sets up Texas and OU pivotal game in the Big 12 race. You see the numbers for both teams. What really stands out is the effectiveness of the Texas ground game. With 269 rushing yards per game, that is fifth best of the bowl subdivision for your Texas Longhorns. And oh, by the way, they're going to look good walking into the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. Where my dogs at? Ooh. Busting it down like a rolly or something. Ooh. Yeah. I got the pack. Running the play with no huddle or nothing. Ooh. I think fashion is really important for us to use as people to just express ourselves. Like I kind of look at it as an art. All my suit. You know, royal blue, pink, uh, blue tie, top pin. Oh, I love, I love my suit. I chose an all black suit, all black shoes. I mean, I feel good. Look, good. I always look good. So especially had that on, I look really good. Sarkeesian had gave us the opportunity to, to express ourselves. He didn't want everybody to have to be forced to wear something standard. It's a mentality. You know, when you're going to play a football game, whether it's at home or on the road, you know, it's a business trip. And we want to make sure we're, we're dressed and ready to go. We had an opportunity where we were able to provide the suit for them. We had a great deal with Reveal, do a custom suit. I love what Coach Sarkeesian did in regards to giving them full autonomy of the design of their suits. It's truly their suit because they chose the fabric, the lapels, the pockets, the features. Some of them spent a couple of hours with me. They were that particular about what they wanted. It's awesome to watch it unfold too, because a lot of times this is their first experience, maybe with a suit, period. And so you have guys FaceTiming their moms, and FaceTiming their dads, and their girlfriends. What color do you think I should do? My mom, she was like, get teal, all the bright blue color. I seen the Sean Jameson suit, and I was like, whoa, like, if you see his car and his suit, they look the exact same. For me, I've always been that guy that, that loves to, to stand out. Chris Adamora is a light pink suit, so uh, he's a little flashy. I like it. Some of the dudes got real wild, but some guys on the team wear some like really bright orange suits. Me and a couple of buddies actually, you know, got a burn orange one, so we've been rocking that down Devo Boulevard this year. That was very surprising to me. It showed like a brotherhood. Oh, the best suit game on the team. It gotta be Demo. Demo, he be switching it up. The wildest suit I'd probably say, and the best, was probably X this week. Xavier suit. I mean, it like something some old people would pick in a furniture place, and he just put it off. Excellent. I'm going to give him a run for his money the rest of the season. I didn't know anybody was stepping like this. So now that I know and I, I see what everybody else is doing, you can expect some pretty fly stuff from me. I, I really don't like to get showed up on. I like to look good, feel good, and I feel like it makes me play good. More to come on Rewind. It's matchup number one in the Texas OU rivalry for Coach Sark, but he's already well-versed on what makes this rivalry special. Sark returns after the break. The win star winning moment is simply getting the win in Fort Worth. Keep in mind, this was a series recently dominated by TCU, winning seven of the previous nine heading into last Saturday. But Texas comes up with the dub, their first in Fort Worth since 2013. Statement certainly made. Now let's get into the Lifetime Longhorn of the Week, and it is Caden Stearns. Caden Stearns all over the place, breaking up passes and getting into the backfield as well, right? We saw him a lot at Texas doing his thing as a ball hawk in the back end of the secondary. This game, though, two sacks, the first two of his career, one of three NFL rookies with multiple sacks in the game so far this season. Quandre Diggs also showing out seven tackles, broke up two, had an interception in the win against the 49ers. Jordan Hicks still making tackles, eight and all in the win against the Rams. And Duvernay, three catches, 31 yards for the Ravens. Saturday is big. It's Texas and OU. We start off with game day at 9 a.m. Central Time. We wrap it all up with Texas game day final after the game here on LHN. Next one, 
is the big one. Texas OU, college game day is going to be there. A lot of people are going to be there. 50-50 split down the 50-yard line. What's the number one thing that stands out just about what this game means? Well, I mean, you know me enough now, Lowell. I, I, I love the pomp and pageantry, the history of college football. I think um, this game is one that stands right there with all of the great games or rivalries and things and maybe the best you know I, i'm looking forward to it i hope uh coming out of here saturday I say that is the best game to be part of in college football it'll be my first one um i know our players are excited to be part of it uh, our our staff is excited i know our fans are um as important of all of that is this is a big game in the big 12 race yeah right this is a big game uh both teams are undefeated uh, two quality teams gonna gonna butt heads and, and get after it, and it's gonna take a quality performance from us to uh, to get a victory. And I know to wrap things up, you're just getting into the film breakdown and starting to game plan. But what jumps off the screen first when you watch film? This is an athletic team. Um, they've recruited well. Uh, they've got a lot of speed on defense and athleticism. Uh, they're very skilled um, at the skilled positions on offense, whether it's wide receiver, running back, quarterback. Um, you know, so the key for us is to, uh, you know, we got to make sure that we play a fast brand of football, but yet we need to be physical. You know, that's our calling card. We need to, we need to hold on to our calling card um, and, and make sure that come the fourth quarter, you know, we're putting ourselves in position to win the ball game. You a corny dog guy? I mean, I can be. <laughs> <laughs> After the dub right there, a little Fletcher's for Coach Sark. Coach, as right. always, appreciate Thanks, it. Coach. Look forward to catching up next week on another edition of Rewind with this guy right here, Coach Sark.